good timing. Morning, folks. It's gonna be a busy one. If you saw last video, you know what we're doing. We're headed over to Uncle Jeff's. We got about 10 loads of manure. We're gonna try to haul those as quick as we can because the tractor that that's hooked to needs to be hooked to the fertilizer spreader. We got a load coming. It'll be here in about an hour. So we'll get back, we'll unhook from the manure spreader, hook up to the fertilizer spreader, and get trucking. Actually, not really trucking. We'll be spreading. This just got full. We're gonna haul that to the cows on the way to Uncle Jeff's and get to work. Well, today we're gonna do two tank, two kinds of fertilizing. Spreading? Yep. We're gonna spread the all natural, and then we're gonna spread the man-made fertilizer. All right. Let's get to it. Load one, going out. Sunny farms, sunny farms, southeastern South Dakota with its natural charm. Sunny farms, sunny farms, southeastern South Dakota. The number of times that I was getting shots like that on the camera and smack my head on that mirror about seven times i do it a lot and i'm like man i'm a 25 year old carrying a camera around while i'm farming smacking my head on stuff what a loser We are chipping away at the big pile. The big pile is no more. We have conquered him. About two more, three more loads right here, and we're out. Audi, time to unhook the manure spreader. Holy schmoly, we're done. And with that pass, according to my math, we've covered about 30 acres of this 96 acre field. And we did like another 40% the last couple of years, so this thing is almost completely full of manure. Jackpot. I don't know how old it is. Well, I guess we're doing this thing. We got a full spreader. A lot of time doing this job, you're stressing about putting some deep ruts in your pasture and hayland, get maybe even getting stuck. But now I'm just stressing about it's the spring of the year, and we got spots like that brown. Starting the year off in a drought, it's not a good feeling. We 
got a sensor down here. That senses the speed at which these are spinning. And he's not working for some reason. That's important because uh, depending on how fast those spin is how wide the spread is. And it's got a solenoid that kind of adjusts it by itself. I'm not sure what the issue is. Hey, this is Cole Sunny. Uh, wondering if you possibly have the spinner speed sensor for a Dalton Mobility Spreader. Well, I've called a bunch of people, a bunch of businesses, seeing if they have that replacement part. One guy said, maybe our Wisconsin store. Well, that ain't gonna help me today. I got a spreader full of, oh, man. If we had our old spreader, it was PTO driven and you could just go. But when you got electrical problems, it ain't as easy as, well, weld something on it. Called our neighbor from Big Johnson Farms and he's got a Big Johnson spare part that will hopefully fit and work. Might be our only hope. Well, I'm glad I didn't drive to our furthest away field, that's for sure. Like I said, I tried it before we even filled it and it looked like it was working then. Called one of our neighbors, he said, yeah, those, they seem to put, oh, that possum doesn't look good. They seem to put uh, some crappy sensors on the back that sometimes go out. Anyway, hopefully my neighbor's sensor, extra sensor will work. And Now that we're in the yard, we'll see if it magically starts working so when I push this ahead I can hear him spinning but that number ain't climbing that's some that's some big Johnson service right there look at this I think he's got what you need yeah one problem is this is tall this see this nipple comes out whereas ours doesn't have a nipple okay oh yeah I'd have to go back up a little bit but it adjusted for show well luckily what seemed to be the only one of those sensors in the world our neighbor had Well, it must have spread, because he's back. This is the grass field we were in last week when I rolled. I mentioned we started a couple fires because there's rocks out and I was hitting our hitting the blades on our mower, starting fires, and we want to get those rocks and pieces of hard material that were creating sparks deeper into the ground. And now we're out here fertilizing. It's a nice big piece of grass. It's a little painful to be out here to be honest. We're in the spring of the year and we got brown spots in the grass. It should be lush and just beautiful out here. And then on top of that, we're spreading out some expensive product that needs a rain to get into the ground. Not to be negative. We're running low on furt here. We're gonna have to go home probably before we finish this field and then come back. And we're so close to being done. The spreader is just about empty. I want you to riddle me this. If this is urea, 
Is this diarrhea? I got a short load in there. You know, we don't need much for finishing that field. And then we're gonna come back and do this 17 acres. And at some point we're gonna till it in either today or tomorrow. Uh, then we don't have to worry about the lack of rain. If we work that in, then it's already in the soil. We got some Midwestern traffic going on here. Skid loader. We calve out here, we plant it to sorghum every year, and we chop it for silage, and it, this little piece, you know, fills up our bunker pretty good. While they're calving, they're eating a lot of feed, they're putting it right back out on the field, defecating it out here, and so, you know, we feel like it's a pretty good way to get some cheap feed. That's why we do sorghum instead of corn. We do chop corn sometimes, but we always chop sorghum. You don't have to insure it. Seed isn't as expensive isn't the best piece of ground anyhow so why raise a poor corn or soybean crop when you can chop silage and feed it to the cattle we're almost done out here already and then we're gonna hop in the big tractor and do some tillage because it is rough from uh, tractors driving out here and cattle walking around Soak it in folks, because this is about the only tillage we're doing this year. Dad's out spreading the load. This is all worked in. Yeah, hopefully we just get a rain. We're supposed to, well, I shouldn't say supposed to. They're talking about potentially two days from now getting a little bit of a rain. 
we we sure hope so anyway we'll be planting here really soon probably gonna you know we got cold temperatures but we also want to get the seed in the ground while there's some moisture towards the top so we can get that crop going so we should be planting here pretty soon thanks for watching everybody love to see you next time have a good one That's not something you see very often. <laughs>